Hey guys, Ed Bird, I'm back today with a lightweight shoe face-off between the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon and the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. First off, I want to say a big, big thank you to all of you who subscribed thus far. We've been really motoring forward in terms of subscribers. I'm really, really thankful and appreciative for all of you that are watching out there. If you haven't done already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be informed about when new videos are launched and hit the bell for notifications. Hey Seth, I know you like your tea in the old beer stein. This is the closest I could find. It's sort of like an ale sort of tankard thing. It tastes good though from this. So I've built up some decent experience in both of these shoes. They come in at around about the £100 mark, which I think is pretty good value really for a running shoe. If you can find something you can put maybe 300 miles into for £100, what more do you want in life? I mean, you could want a speedboat or your own personal helicopter, maybe your own running track. You could be like Rod the Mod Stewart and have your own football pitch in your back garden. But I think for around about £100, getting quite good running shoes, a good thing for us mere mortals anyway. So these shoes, both very, very lightweight, can be used for lots of different training purposes and even racing. Very minimal uppers on both of these shoes. EVA cushioning, let's get to it. So the rink on at first, for me, this fits very much at present into that long run, tempo run category. I find that the Rebel's got a little less structure really, even though it's got these kind of sewn on kind of structured pieces here. It's just got a little less structure for me and it's not gonna be one for super long mileage. That mesh upper on the Rincon is really nice and breathable. It's super, super light. It really is a light shoe, guys. I can't stress that enough. No, it's, it's super light. It really is. It hardly feels like it's there. That got me thinking, just how light is it when I compare it up against some of the lightest shoes that I've got in my ever-growing collection? And by ever-growing collection, if my wife's listening, it's not really that big. It's much smaller a collection than you think it is, okay? You won't tell her, will you guys? I got the old scales out and I weighed them up. Vaporfly, 4% Flyknit, 220 grams. Pegasus Turbo 2, 250 grams. Hoka Oni Oni Rincon, 255 grams. New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel, 220 grams. Well, hang on a minute, they're out of order. Are you trying to tell me that this is the same weight as the Vaporfly? I think they probably are. What a crazy world we live in. That side, this has got loads more cushioning here in the midsole. That mesh on the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel is very flexible, very breathable, though I find it far less comfortable than the mesh on the Hoka Rincon. I find the Hoka far easier in terms of getting a really good lockdown across the top of the forefoot. I did change the laces out on these, as you probably remember from my full review a little while ago, and that made things better, but I still achieve a better lockdown in the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. It's good stuff. I find the upper on the Hoka Rincon far less coarse than the Rebel. That single layer mesh, it's got some white kind of stripes. White stripes? Jack White's not in there. Meg White's not in there. They're not there. Although they could have worn this shoe, it would have worked really well on stage. There's some kind of strips inside that provide a little bit more rigidity to the upper. I found over the first 36 miles that the upper really doesn't give at all. It's staying exactly where it is, still providing a really nice lock over the top of the forefoot. I found that the upper on the Rebel does start to loosen up a little bit over the initial sort of 50 miles. That aside, I do prefer the Flyknit upper on the Nike Zoomfly Flyknit to that kind of knit upper on the Rebel. I found sizing a bit odd in the Rebel. I don't think half a size going up half a size would have made a difference really to me. It was more about width. Sizing spot on for me in the Hoka Oni Oni Rincon. Lovely room in the toe box. My toes feel really comfy as if I'm sat by a roaring fire with the snow pelting the window from the outside. Anyway, there's loads of exposed midsole on these shoes. Not quite so much in the Rebel, but absolutely loads in the Rincon. In fact, more of the outsole here is really midsole. You've got these strategically placed um, blown rubber sections here, but most of it's just midsole. 
The midsole foam here is really quite delicate. It's started to break down. I've got numerous holes in it and you get loads of stuff building up in these holes in the outsole sections. This thing grips really well on pavement and roads, but I found it sadly lacking on any sort of smooth stones. If they're wet at all, you will slide like a skater. The rincon has got a much larger surface area on the outsole of the shoe. I find it a considerably more stable ride than the Rebel. The rincon has got some strategically placed uh, rubber sections here. And judging by everybody else's reviews of the shoe, they start to see wear on those after 20 or 30 miles. I'm starting to see a little bit of wear here on those blown rubber sections. It's not hugely considerable, but it's certainly wear. People have complained that it does wear out quickly. It's not wearing out that quickly for me. It doesn't look that much of a mess on the bottom. I'm gonna hammer this one into the floor and see what it looks like over 100 miles. I think so far the Rebel's translucent rubber outsole here has held up a lot better than the Rincon. Maybe it's that data-driven lug design. Data-driven. This thing's data-driven. Where's the USB port? Ah, it's there. <laughs> On foot, the drops are very similar in these shoes. Six mil in the Rebel and five mil in the Rincon. Gotta be honest, I really dislike the insole supplied within these shoes. I've removed them from both of the pairs. They're thin and slippery in the case of the Rebels and just completely pointless really in the case of the Hokus. I preferred the Rebels actually without the insoles. I've taken them out, I think the shoe feels so much better. I felt it made the Rebel a far better fitting shoe. More true to size and still has a nice comfortable underfoot feel. Within the Rincons, I placed my insoles from my Pegasus 35 Turbos. They seem to fit pretty perfectly, really. Provide a little bit more cushion, certainly do the job. Didn't have to modify them at all. Thanks to viewer Julian Wilkes for the heads up on that one. With those other insoles, the Rincon feels even more cushioned. I've enjoyed six, eight, and 10 mile efforts in these over the last week, ranging around the seven minutes 45 per mile pace. Again, those are way off my moderate level pace or moderate level of activity, but for longer range building in my training, I think these are perfect for purpose. Come on, perfect for purpose. Blah, 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 blah. So apart from appearing within that same kind of price range, the Rebel just isn't as versatile a shoe as the Rincon. I think go for the Rincons if you want something that can handle tempo runs or long runs. It could probably do some interval work as well. I think it can go up higher in pace than I've pushed it so far. I think the Rebel's really a faster strip back shoe, ideal for tempo runs, intervals, and for racing. I think you could probably race in the Rincons, but personally, I prefer a higher heel to toe drop. Okay guys, hope you've enjoyed this little comparison between these two shoes. They kind of occupy a similar price point, but I think they're probably aimed for different things. I probably use towards the Rincon really. I think that's probably a better value shoe. It's only for hundred pounds. It's a great deal. If you've worn these, if you've trained in them, raced in them, please comment below and share your experiences with the other viewers. If you haven't already, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down here somewhere and make sure you give the video a thumbs up like. Please share it with any running friends you might have. My name's Ed Bird and I'll be seeing you.